Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and today I'm going to be showing you how to build this countdown timer using HTML, CSS and of course JavaScript. All right, so this project right here is perfect for you guys who want to go from a beginner to an intermediate level in JavaScript knowledge. So basically, it's going to show you how to or a method um, to go about uh, building a component like this using JavaScript, which of course includes buttons, uh, UI elements that update and so on. All right, so the countdown timer looks like this. Um, there's two buttons to start the countdown timer or set the value. So for example, if I set the value of 25 minutes and press OK, it's going to be reflected right on the left side. Um, then of course, if I press the start button, it is going to start to count down from 25 minutes relatively straightforward. I'm sure many of you guys have used a timer at some point in your life. All right, so I can press pause, it's going to pause it. Um, I can also set a new value and I can say something like 10 and it's just going to override that value which the user has set previously. All right, so uh, the source code for this is going to be linked down below if you want to download it and follow it um, while you watch today's video. Um, so let's get started. So going inside this tab right here, I've got this index HTML. So uh, let's begin from scratch to create what I just showed you. All right, so going inside the text editor right down here, I've got something like this. So I've got this empty index HTML, but I have included a JavaScript and a CSS file. So make sure you have a directory called CSS with an empty main.css inside there. And the same goes for the JavaScript and empty JavaScript file. Once you've linked those two up with your link rel style sheet and your JavaScript, just make sure that when it comes to the JavaScript include that you are using a type of module. This is very important because we're going to be using uh, the import export syntax um, to achieve our countdown timer. So once you've included those two files right there in your index HTML, you also want to include Google material icons. Okay, so we're going to be using Google's free uh, icon library to give us these, you know, uh, start, timer, pause icons. Um, so if you head down to the link in the description below, um, I've just got um, the website for the Google material icon library. As we can see right up here, I can do a search for something like pause and we can see that we've got all of these icons we can use. All right, so to actually make the icons work on your website, just go to uh, the, uh, what's it called? Go to the, um, to the how to implement section right down here. Once again, it's going to be linked below and go to the uh, icon font for the web section. So just copy this link right here and paste it in your head and you should be good to go. All right, so let's actually begin on the code for the countdown timer. Uh, as usual in my videos, I like to do the HTML and the CSS first before moving on to the JavaScript uh, later on. All right, so when it comes to the HTML for the countdown timer, it's worth noting that uh, the JavaScript is going to be eventually generating this HTML for us. But just so we can track our progress on the CSS, we're going to be writing the HTML inside here for now. All right, so the HTML for the timer is going to look like this. We're going to have a div with a class of timer, and this is going to be uh, the main container for the entire uh, components or widget, whatever you want to call it. So it's going to be the main container. Now inside the timer, there's going to be a couple of different parts. Okay, we have the minutes, the little colon between the minutes and seconds and the seconds. Okay, so for those ones, we can make a new span with a class of timer underscore underscore part. Okay, so um, we can just say zero zero here as the default value for the minutes part. Okay, so um, we need to also identify this one as being the minutes section or part. So let's just copy this class name here and do it again, this time saying dash dash minutes. This way, the JavaScript knows where to look for the minutes uh, part. Okay, now um, I, wanna, I just want to pause here and talk about uh, the class naming. So I'm using the block element modifier CSS naming convention, but you can name these classes whatever you like, but that basically just explains my double underscores and my dash dashes. All right, so let's make a copy of this line right here and change it to be seconds and also default the seconds to be uh, zero, zero. All right, now 
in between the, uh, of course, you know, um, our, our minutes and seconds is going to be another span with a class of timer underscore underscore part and just a simple colon. So if I save this here and go back in the browser, we get something like this. So now let's add those two buttons on the end. So going back inside here, let's make a new button with a type of button just like this. Okay. And also a class of timer underscore underscore BTN. Now inside this button, we're going to be using the Google material icons. So um, when it comes to uh, the initial load up of the countdown timer, it's going to be the start icon right there. So if you do a search inside here for start, um, and just check the field section, we're going to be using this play arrow icon. So if I click on this, it's going to tell you uh, the name of the icon right here being play underscore arrow. So just copy this, uh, uh, this icon ID and paste it inside a span with a class of material dash icons just like this and just put your ID inside there. So now if I save this and go back in the browser, we have the play button appearing right there. Now just going back to uh, the classes on this button, uh, we need to identify uh, this particular button as being uh, the control button. So, it, uh, so it, uh, it controls the play and the stop of the timer. So we can just say dash dash control at the end of that, of course, doing it twice. Now, we also need to change the color of, uh, of the icon, depending if it's a, um, a play or if it's a, um, you know, pause icon. So basically, if it's a start, make it green. If it's a pause, make it red. So let's add another class here for timer btn dash dash start. Okay, so we're going to be using CSS to, of course, customize those colors, but uh, make sure you have those classes right there. Now, next up, we have the uh, the second icon. So let's just copy and paste all of this stuff right here. But um, this time, down in the class here, we can remove this uh, this start modifier and just change this one here to be reset. So basically, it's timer button dash dash reset to identify um, the reset button. When it comes to the uh, the Google material icon for this, we're going to be using the timer icon. So we can just save. This this here and go back in the browser and we get something like that. So now let's use CSS to convert our, you know, plain old HTML into something like this. All right. So going inside the main.css file, firstly, I want to make some simple modifications to the body. I'm going to set a background here to be uh, triple D and a margin of 24 PX just for some more space. Okay. Uh, we can also begin to target the class of timer. And for this one here, let's set a font family of sans serif. We can also display this as an inline block. This will ensure that uh, it will not take up the entire width of the page. Let's add some padding of 24 PX top and bottom and then 32 PX for left and right. Um, a border dash radius here of 30 PX for our rounded corners and a simple background of white. So if I save this here and go back in the browser, we get something like this. As we can see, we can just zoom out a little bit here. So this is what we're actually going to get with those uh, CSS modifications. Um, we can move down now and style up the actual timer parts. So for those ones, let's target the timer part uh, class. And we can simply set a couple of things for the font. We can set a font size of 36 pixels here and a font weight of bold. Save this back in the browser and we get something like this. Okay. Moving on to the two timer buttons, we can target the class of timer underscore underscore button. We can set a width of 50 PX and the same goes for the height right here um, to give us a perfect square. Um, we can give this also a margin left of 16 PX to create some space between, of course, each icon and the next one um, and a border dash radius of 50% to give us those rounded or to give us a rounded uh, circular icon. I can save this here and go back in the browser and we get something like this. All right, so um, we can now uh, do a few more things, uh, that being removing the border. So we can say border of none, a color, 
of white, okay? Um, a background here of, now this will be the default uh, background. So we can make this uh, 820, 8E6, this is the purple color. All right, so um, we can now specify a cursor of pointer. So if I save this here and go back in the browser, we get something like this, okay? So like I just said earlier, um, the purple is the default uh, button color, and we're gonna make that different with our modifier classes being the, um, the start and eventually the stop class um, on the actual buttons, all right? So speaking of that, let's copy this class name right here and just change uh, the background color for the start button. We can just say background and make this something like, uh, let's just do 00B84 and C for a green. I just make a copy of this entire rule set here and change this to be stop and make it uh, just, a, um, just a red. So that being FF0256. Uh, and you can kind of argue this right here is a pink, but that's okay. Um, if I save this and go back in the browser, we get something like this. All right, so we're gonna be using the JavaScript to simply uh, toggle these classes um, and these icons for, um, you know, for, those, uh, for those two buttons right there. And that is all for the CSS and of course the HTML. So now let's move on to the JavaScript. Okay, so when it comes to the JavaScript for the countdown timer, uh, like I mentioned earlier, um, it's gonna be generating this HTML for us, which means we can actually comment out everything inside here and then eventually delete it later on once we're finished, all right? But um, when it comes to the JavaScript code, uh, we can begin by creating um, a new file inside the JS directory right here and call this one timer.js. So this right here is gonna be a JavaScript class containing all of the code for the timer. Now, this includes both the logic and the user interface code. Uh, you can, of course, argue that uh, you should separate the user interface code from um, the, uh, the logic, and you can, but to keep it simple, I'm just going to include them both in one, all right? Now, inside uh, this timer.js, we're gonna say right up here, export default class and call this one timer. All right, so uh, this export default just allows us to then uh, import this class into this main.js. Now, if you're not too sure how JavaScript classes work, I've got a whole video dedicated to them, uh, which I do recommend you watch if you've never heard of them or used them uh, before. All right, so uh, the constructor for this class right here is gonna take through a root element. So this root is just gonna refer to our div with a class of timer. So you can see right here, I've actually commented out everything but the container div. That is because we need to use this div right here um, to pass it into this timer class as the root, all right? so. That being said, let's just say console.log here and log out the root and then head inside the main.js and we're going to import the timer from dot forward slash timer dot js. So now I can simply just say a new instance of the timer and then I can pass in that div. So I can say right here, uh, document dot query selector, then pass in the class of timer. All right, so if I save this here and go back in the browser and check the console, we get the timer right there appearing. And of course it is currently empty because the JavaScript is not currently inserting that HTML. It's all commented out. All right, so going back inside here, uh, the first thing to do inside the timer.js is going to be uh, to define a new static method um, called uh, get HTML. So this static method right here is just gonna return the HTML string for the insides of the timer. We can return and then using the back ticks near the one on your keyboard, so uh, these things right here, this allows us to use multi-line JavaScript strings. Um, and now we can just simply specify the same HTML as we did earlier, but inside the JavaScript. So I'll just comment this back in and then uh, cut the HTML and then simply paste it inside the JavaScript right down here and just fix up the indentation. So something like that. So of course, all of this stuff here should be your defaults like the double zeros and the start and so on. So 
This is the HTML string. So how do we inject this inside the actual uh, root element? Well, it's quite straightforward. We just say root.innerHTML is equal to then call the static method. We can just say timer.getHTML, very straightforward. If I save this and go back in the browser, we get something like this. As we can see, the HTML is back and working. All right, so the next step of the actual, uh, you know, timer here is going to be to get a reference to each of the important HTML elements. Okay, so things like your minutes, seconds, your buttons, that way the JavaScript then uh, can then interact with them. Okay, so going down here, we'll say uh, this dot elements is equal to a new object right inside here. And inside this object, we're gonna be specifying a couple of things. The first thing is gonna be the minutes element. So for this, we can just say uh, roots dot query selector, then select the class of timer underscore underscore part dash dash minutes. And now we can uh, get a reference to this span right here in the JavaScript by saying this dot L dot minutes. Okay, do the exact same thing for the seconds right down here, just like that, um, as well as the stop start button or the resume button. Um, and we can just say, we can, we can call this one stop start, and this will be a reference to uh, control. So arguably, you can actually name this control. In fact, that's probably better. So uh, let's name this one control. So this.elements.control for our start and stop button, okay? And lastly, uh, for the reset or the set timer uh, button, we can uh, just of course pass inside here, uh, timer underscore underscore btn dash dash reset. Now just realize that this here needs to be timer btn dash dash control. So got the control and the reset button reference inside the instance of the class. So I can now say console.log this.el, save this, go back in the browser and confirm everything works. And we get a reference to all of our elements right there and it's all working perfectly fine. All right, so let's move on now to specifying a couple of instance variables for this class or for this object. Okay, so we're gonna say basically when the component first loads up, we're gonna say this.interval is equal to null. So basically, we're gonna be using the set interval uh, function in JavaScript to uh, trigger and make the timer work. So by default, there's gonna be no interval, which means of course, the timer is not gonna be running. So let's set that to be null. We're also gonna say this dot remaining seconds is gonna be equal to zero. So just, uh, just basically saying here, this remaining seconds is our current remaining seconds in the timer. Let's default this to be zero. All right, cool. So we're gonna drop down here and just finish off this constructor mostly by specifying two event listeners for both of those buttons right there. So we'll say uh, this.l.control.addEventListener. We're gonna listen for the click event on that control, that start stop button. So when the start stop button gets clicked, we're gonna do something. So I'll just comment this out and say to do add in the code and do the exact same thing for uh, the reset button. So I wanna just stop right here. We're gonna get back to this code later on. We actually need to write uh, the different methods and logic uh, for all of this stuff inside here when the user clicks on the control and the reset button. So speaking of that, let's write a new method down here to update the interface time. So the minutes and seconds um, based on the current remaining seconds. So going down here, we're gonna say update interface time. Inside here now, we're gonna simply calculate what the different minutes and sections uh, parts should be. Okay, so for example, uh, let's default this to be something like 90 seconds. That of course just translate to be uh, one minute and 30 seconds. Okay, so for a 90 seconds, remaining seconds, um, dropping down here, let's work out how many minutes that should be. Of course, we know it's meant to be one minute. So how do we get one from that 90? We'll say const minutes is equal to, then just do math.floor 
and say this dot remaining uh, seconds divided by 60. Okay, so that right there is going to give you um, your one part of the 90 second remaining uh, seconds. Okay, now dropping down, we can say const seconds is going to be equal to this dot remaining seconds mod 60. Okay, so oops, this needs to be a percent sign. So mod, so mod 60. So this right here is going to give you the remainder of the division. Okay, so in this case here, it's going to give you 30. If I console.log uh, the minutes and of course the second, let's just confirm this right here. We need to of course call this method. So let's call the, uh, you know, this dot update interface time uh, right under the remaining seconds uh, assignment. Save this, go back in the browser. We get one minute and 30 seconds right there. If I make this something like, uh, let's just do 600 seconds, um, go back in the browser, it's going to be 10 minutes. So 10 minutes and zero seconds. If I make this 599, it's going to be nine minutes and 59 seconds. So that is our, you know, minutes and our seconds part right there. I'll make this back to 90 just to simplify things. Now dropping down here, let's simply just inject those values inside the HTML. So we'll just say this.el.minutes.text content is going to be equal to the minutes, but we then need to say minutes.toString, then say pad start and say for two and then put zero inside there. So I want to show you what happens if we don't do this. So I'll just comment out this code here and put it back to the minutes by itself. So if I save this and go back in the browser, we get one. So we actually want zero and then one, not just one. So that is what this code is doing. Um, it's simply just going to basically just pad the beginning of your string to be zero uh, if there was no value. So at least two characters put a zero if it doesn't exist. So zero, one, okay? Exact same thing for the seconds right there. So changing those two to be seconds. So now if I save this and go back in the browser, we get 0130. It's working perfectly fine. And that is our method right there for updating the interface time. Okay. Uh, the next method here is going to be to update the buttons. Okay. So basically let's say update interface controls right here. When it comes to updating these controls, um, we need to check whether or not the timer is starting. Okay, so also keep in mind that when I say updating the interface controls, I'm referring to um, the button. So uh, of course the start and the stop button. So if there is an active timer, sorry, if there is an active interval on uh, the timer, then it means it's currently running which also means um, we need to display the pause button. So let's go inside here. We're going to say if this dot interval is equal to null, okay, then it is currently not running. So we need to display the start button and the icon and so on. So we'll say inside here, this dot L dot control dot inner html let's set the icon to be the play icon in the case where we need to of course display it so we'll say inside here uh, using the back ticks once again on the keyboard we'll say span class of material dash icon so inside here now we can just say the icon of play underscore arrow just like that okay Let's drop down once again and we can just change the classes. So of course, we need to also add um, the classes right down here, the uh, the BTN start or stop, depending on the, um, the actual action. So going uh, right up here, we can just say this.el.control.class list. Uh, let's add the class of timer underscore underscore BTN dash dash start. And of course, just remove the class for the stop. So um, that is the code right there to display the start icon. It's going to be the opposite. If I just say else here, it's going to be the opposite for the stop. So I'll just paste this right down here. We can change the icon to be the pause icon. 
and we're going to be adding the stop and this time removing the start. So now I want to test this method out. So going up here, uh, let's set the interval to be null, then just say update interface controls. If I save this and go back in the browser, as we can see, we stay with the default of the start icon. But if I change this interval to be something like, uh, let's just do uh, 40, it doesn't matter what this is as, I, as long as it's not null. Um, if I make this 40, go back in the browser, we get the pause button right there. So it's going to change depending on the status of your interval. So we're going to be getting to this interval uh, very shortly, but um, that is your method right there for updating the interface controls. Okay, so Let's now get into the interesting part and that is going to be um, the start and stop actions. Okay, so going down here, we are going to define a new method called start. So um, when this method is called, it is of course going to start the timer. This includes adding on the interval to of course make it work. So inside the start method, we're going to first check if there is actually any, uh, any remaining seconds to count down from. So we'll say if this dot remaining seconds is equal to zero, then we can just return and basically just cancel out the current operation. Very straightforward. If there is actual seconds to count down from, then we can do something else. We can set the interval. So we'll say this dot interval is equal to, then use the set interval function. So for those of you guys who are not aware of the set interval function, basically it allows you to run code on a timer. So every X amount of milliseconds. Inside here, we'll say set interval, then just say um, inside this function, we're going to run this code inside here every second that goes by. So every 1000 milliseconds or every second. So the code inside this set interval uh, function is going to look like this. We can first begin by uh, by reducing the remaining seconds by one. So we'll say this dot remaining seconds minus minus to of course take away one from the current value. Once that's done, we can update the time in the user interface. So we'll say this dot update uh, interface time with the new value, okay? And then dropping down here, we can just say, you know what, if we've now reached zero seconds, so if we say, if this dot remaining seconds is equal to zero, so if after we've reduced by one and we now have zero seconds remaining, we now need to stop the timer. So we'll say this dot stop right down here. Now, of course, we haven't defined this stop method. So uh, let's do that very shortly, but I just want to drop down into the interval or after the interval uh, declaration right up here or assignment right up here. And I just want to do one more thing. That is going to be this dot update interface controls. So after we've set the interval to say, yes, continue counting down, um, we then just need to say, you know what, let's display the pause button basically um, and swap out that actual button right there based on this interval, which is now set. Okay, so um, if I now uh, go inside the constructor and I just call this dot start, we should see uh, it count down from 90 seconds. If I save this and go back in the browser, uh, we can see it is now counting down and of course it has that pause button now being displayed due to the fact that this slot interval has a value and is not null anymore. Okay, so that is your start uh, method right there. What about the stop method? So for this one, we can just uh, say stop inside here. And this one is going to be relatively straightforward. It is simply going to uh, clear the interval. So uh, basically just stop it from running. Now, this method is called stop, but it is used by the pause button because you are still stopping the timer, um, even though you are pausing it, right? So I can say inside here, clear interval, then pass in this dot interval. That is going to stop the code which runs right up here. We can then just say this dot interval is equal to null to clear out the interval and make sure that now when I call the uh, update interface controls, it is going to see that, you know, the interval is now null. Therefore, it is going to display um, the start button instead. All right. So now um, if I save this and go back up here and I just call uh, this dot stop right after the start, we should see 
nothing really because of course there was no opportunity to um, you know actually begin the timer so maybe it's best if I now implement these two event listeners right down here to further demonstrate the start and stop behavior and effectively complete this countdown timer all right so uh, let's just default our seconds to be zero um, and remove this start and stop and then drop down here into the click listener for the start and the pause button okay so inside here um, when the user clicks on the start or the pause slash stop button um, we need to check the current interval status so we're going to say here if this dot interval is equal to null then of course the user wants to actually start counting down so we'll just simply say this dot start otherwise if there is currently an interval going we can just stop it so we'll say this dot stop right there if i save this and go back in the browser and i press start nothing happens because we've got the check uh, right down here on the remaining seconds. So let's make the seconds default to be something like 90. Once again, go back in the browser, press start. Um, it is now going to begin the timer right inside there. Um, that's working perfectly fine. I can now press stop or pause and it's going to pause the interval right there. I can press play and it's going to resume it. Okay, so that is the event listener for the, uh, for the control button complete. Let's make this back to zero because now we're going to be able to set the actual time and remaining seconds using the user interface. So for that, inside the resets or the set button event listener, we're going to prompt the user. So we'll say const uh, something like input uh, minutes is equal to then using the JavaScript prompt function, we can say something like enter number of minutes just like that. Now we can say if the user decided to actually give a value and not just press on the cancel button. So if they've entered a value inside here, we can do a couple of things. Um, we can actually uh, firstly check, sorry, my mistake guys. Um, this needs to be if the input minutes is, uh, is less than 60. So my mistake. Um, if their submitted value is less than 60 minutes because um, this uh, this timer cannot display more than an hour. So if they've entered a number that is less than 60 minutes long, we can now uh, essentially set that value. So we'll say this dot stop just to stop the current timer from running. Then we can set the remaining seconds. We'll say this dot remaining seconds is going to be equal to um, the minutes value times 60. So we'll say input minutes times 60 right there. Of course, that's just going to convert your, for example, uh, 10 minutes into 600 seconds. Okay, cool. Now we can drop down and then just say this dot update interface uh, time. This of course is going to then display the current remaining seconds in the minutes and seconds, uh, you know, section right there. So if I save this, go back in the browser and I set the time to be something like uh, 10 minutes and press OK, we get 10 right there. I can set it to be something like, let's just do 825, uh, mi uh, my mistake, <laughs> sorry guys, um, something like uh, 45 minutes, okay? Press OK, we get 45 right there. So um, I can now press start and the timer is working. So um, that is all of the timer code right there. Um, you know, that's all. So uh, if, if you guys liked today's video, uh, drop a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll appreciate it. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.